In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an unread message notification for your application. So if you have any kind of in-app messaging features in your app, where you've created like an inbox kind of like this, where your users can message each other, then this would be a really nice touch to add to this type of feature so that your users know when they have a message that they haven't read yet. It works very much like your regular email inbox where you might see a badge with a number uh, for the number of unread messages or perhaps the conversation as a whole is in bold because that is what tells the user that um, that has not been read yet, it's new. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do this it's really all in the way that you've set up your database. Um, and I'm going to use a very simple example here. On the left, I have um, a list of conversations. Um, so with the email um, equivalent, this would basically be your list of threads uh, where we have the subject of the thread and then the um, person you are speaking to. So I'm logged in as someone, and these are the conversations that I'm having with other users in the application. Uh, when I click on view, then I will view the messages inside of uh, that conversation thread. And I've color coded them here so we can keep them apart. What, you know, what's on the left, what's on the right. And I've also added the the subject line for this particular thread to the top here so we know where, which one we're really looking at. Now, I don't have any messages inside here yet because as we go through, I'll be adding messages um, and triggering this notification badge that we're going to create. So um, I'm not going to go through the setup of creating the inbox feature in general with the conversation and the messages and who they go to. I actually have a much more in-depth tutorial about how to do that for my VIP members. If you're interested in joining the membership, if you're not already a VIP member, there is uh, information about that in the description below. You can read all about how to become a member and um, get that tutorial plus many, many other tutorials too. So let's go into the editor for this application. I am gonna to go to my data types and this is all I really need to create an inbox feature. Um, the user type is obviously your built-in type uh, and we will be updating this here. Uh, then I have a conversation type to um, collect my list of messages within a single conversation thread. I have a line for a, a text field for the subject of the conversation and uh, a list of users to know who, who's involved, who's participating in this conversation. This makes it so that um, it doesn't need to be just between two people, it can actually be between a group of people. And then I have my message data type, which contains the content of the message. Uh, and there's much more you can do um, to uh, add in more features and functionality to this, but this is kind of the bare bones of what you need to get a simple messaging feature to work. Now, what we're gonna add to the user data type is a field for unread messages. So I'm creating a new field under the user type. I'm gonna call this um, list of unread messages. And the field type will be message. And this will be a list. So basically this is going to reference a list of messages regardless of the conversation that they're in. That's important to, to note here that we're not doing a list of unread conversations, instead a list of unread messages, because this actually gives us a little bit more control over which messages within the conversation have not yet been seen. Uh, rather than just saying, in general, you have not looked at some update to a conversation. We're, we're being more specific here. So what I want to happen is anytime a user sends a new message, that new message will be added to anyone in the conversations list of unread messages. So that's the workflow we're going to create. From this send button, I'm going to click on this, open up the property editor, click on start edit workflow. And the first thing I want to happen is obviously I want to create the message. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a new thing, create a new message, and I will save the body of this message to the uh, multi-line input that I have on my page. That's this one here where I can type in. And then I'm also going to uh, make a change to my conversation overall because I want uh, that's the data source of the repeating group inside of this purple group here. Let me go over 
to it real quick. This here, this repeating group is displaying a list of the conversations messages, which is a list of messages under the conversation data type. Okay, so I do need to update the conversation when I, new cre when I create a new message. So thing to change, parent groups, conversation, list of messages, we'll add this brand new message we just created. All right, now I'm also going to make a change to a list of things. And the list of things will be the list of users participating in this conversation. The list to change is the parent group's conversations users. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my data type to show you where that is. This is under the conversation type, we have a list of users. Okay, so those users, the update I'm making is to their list of unread messages. So each one of them will have this change made. We're going to add the new message that we just created, result of step one, to this list of unread messages. So what this allows us to do is user A can open up the app, view the message, and we'll, we're gonna do the workflow to remove it from this list because now they've viewed it. And user B might still have it as unread. They might not have opened the app yet. Maybe they'll come back two days from now. So one person will have read it, the other person will not. So just by one person opening up the message, it does not affect anybody else. It keeps them separate. That's why we want to place this field, list of unread messages on the user data type. I often see that people are, um, doing unread uh, functionality within the message data type or within the conversation data type. You certainly can. It's a little more cumbersome to make that happen. It's so much easier if you just put things on the user because then it goes user by user. Um, okay, so send, create new message, update the conversation, update the list of users to add their, add this new message to their list. Okay, so now that we have the message here, now we can create visuals to let the user know which ones, which conversations are unread. So I'm gonna go over to my conversation um, uh, repeating group here. This is just a search for conversations where the list of users for that conversation contains me, the person who's logged in. So I'm gonna do, let's do this. I'm gonna do a text kind of next to it. I'm going to make some room for it here. And we're going to uh, display the current cells, conversations, messages. I'm going to show you actually two ways to do this. Current cells, conversations, messages, um, filtered. And uh, add a new constraint to this filter where the unique ID is in the current users list of unread messages, unique ID. So if this conversation has messages that are also inside of the user's list of unread messages, those are the ones I want to retrieve in this search here. And I'm just gonna count them up. I just wanna see how many of those um, uh, intersect like that. And so this will show me a number here. Okay, so let me do a little bit of styling. I'm gonna center this so you can create like a badge effect. I'm going to put this text inside of a group. I've just right clicked and grouped it. Um, the text itself, I'm gonna make a little bit smaller, make it bold and center that vertically like that. And now my group will select the first parent for the group. I'm gonna make it a circle. That's typically what we see. So I'll set the, one, the roundness to 100 give the background a color of some kind. We'll just do a purple like that. And I'll make sure my circle is even on all sides. We'll do 25 and 25. Okay. All right, so now let me do the line spacing so it's a little bit better there. And we'll make this white. Okay, so now we'll have a badge here. Now the group, I only want the group to show if there are items. I want it to be hidden if there are not um, any unread messages. So I'll add a condition to this group. And basically I'm gonna use the same logic as my count. So I'll go back to the text, 
I'm going to copy this expression here, copy, and then go to the group, select first parent. Now I'm on the group condition, and I will paste this expression there. Now, same expression, current sales conversations messages filtered as long as the unique ID of the message in this conversation is in the current user's list of unread messages, unique ID, and count that up. If there is more than zero, then we want to show um, this, uh, this group, this badge. You can do it either way. So if there's more than zero, then this is visible. And by default, it is not visible. And I would actually recommend doing that. Or you could have it visible by default and reverse the, the expression. So when it is zero, then you hide it. But by default, it's visible. You can do it either way. I actually prefer to have more things hidden than not um, so that there's no flashing of items while Bubble is still thinking about whether it needs to show or hide something. Uh, so I'm going to do the opposite here. So when there is more than zero, then we will make this visible. OK, so I'm going to refresh the page. And I'm currently logged in as, I believe, Jane, my test user. Jane at test.com. I'm running as that user right now. So I'm going to select this first conversation. Welcome to the app. And I will say, thanks, Sue. Uh, can't wait to chat later. OK, and I will hit send. So I can see there's my message that I created. This is the name of the, the email of the creator of the message. And I can see that I have the badge now, which I do not want because I'm the one that I, that created the message. So we need to add one more filter to our uh, group visibility condition. Um, as long as the message was not created by us, we do want to see this here. If it was created by us, we want to ignore it because we obviously, we're, we're the owner of that message. We don't need to be notified that it was added to the conversation. So I'm going to add a constraint here to the condition for showing the group, which is the creator is not uh, this one here, does not equal the current user. Same thing for the text for the expression here, because I don't want it to count up any messages that I've created. So I'm going to go back to the filter and do creator does not equal the current user, just like that. OK, so we will refresh the page, and we should see it is no longer there. But now if I log in as Sue, so I'm going to run as sue at test.com. We can see that she does have the badge here and that there is one message. And um, I'm going to rerun this as Jane again to create another message just so that we can see the count go up for Sue. So I'm going to go to this same conversation, another test message. OK, see how the badge does not show up. That's good. That's what we want. And then for Sue, I will run back as her. And now she has two unread messages. So how do we clear this when uh, you know we go to view the message and now we've seen it? We'll do a workflow off of whatever you want to trigger as the, the clearing uh, action. In my case, I want it to happen when I click view, because when the user clicks view, then the messages are appearing, and we just want that batch to go away. There, You can completely customize this. If you'd rather do have the user select message by message, this has been viewed, then this has been viewed, then you can totally do that. Not a problem. The same process is going to apply. So I'm going to do it off of the View button here. Um, start Editor Workflow. Right now, the View button is sending data to that purple group on the right, so we know which conversation to look at. But what we're also going to do is make a change to the current user, right? Because I'm opening up my own conversations. So the only record I want to modify here is my own. And the, the field that I'm going to change is the list of unread messages. And in the way that I'm doing it here, I just want the user to clear out all of the messages for this conversation only. If I have unread messages in other conversations, I don't want that to be affected. So list of unread messages, we're going to remove list. This means I'm going to remove multiple items. Um, 
and the list will be the current cell's conversations, messages. Basically, I've opened up the conversation. I want all of this conversation's messages to be out of my unread list. Even if there was only one unread, doing remove list will still work for it, but you want to take the highest number into account. So um, remove will only do one item at a time, but we're not sure if there is only one. There could be more messages that have been um, added to the conversation. Uh, so I'm gonna select remove list so that everything gets covered there. So now I'm gonna refresh the page and when I click view for this particular conversation, we're gonna see this badge will go away. So view and it's gone because these messages have now been seen. Okay, and other things that you can do um, to indicate that a conversation has been unread or specific messages have been unread is you can bold things. I see that a lot with uh, email clients. So for example, with these messages here, um, I can do a condition on this text. So when current users list of unread messages contains current cells message. So when, when my user records field of unread messages contains this particular message in this cell, then I will make it bold or change the color or make it italic, whatever. Um, same thing with the conversations. Um, you can use this same expression to filter and find um, another, I was going to show you another way to write this expression, which is not going through the parent group's conversations messages, but instead going through the user's list of unread. So I'm going to clear this and we'll do it from a different angle. Current users list of unread messages filtered. Uh, where is it? Down here. And the unique ID is in the parent group's conversations messages unique ID like that and then we'll count okay and this way you don't even have to filter by the creator of the message because we're only going to be adding messages to everyone else in the conversation, not the user who created it. In fact, I'm going to go back to that workflow to make sure we did that over here, make changes to list of user. So we did it. So we need to add that filter. I want to only update people who are not myself um, to update their field here. So we're going to do parent groups, conversations, users, and then minus the current user. So I take myself out of the equation. I don't need to update my own field. And in fact, doing this eliminates the need to filter um, the creator of the message from these count expressions here. As you can see, there's lots of different ways to go about doing things. And, and there might be a case where you do need to include the user um, or you need to search for your count in a very specific way. Uh, if you have added the conversation as a reference under the message data type, for example, parent conversation like this, and this is a type conversation. So we can link to every message's parent as opposed to you know filtering every single conversation's list of messages. That would give us another um, uh, angle at getting to this count. So we can do filtered instead of by the unique ID, we can go by the parent conversation equals the parent group's conversation. This is referring to um, the cell here because this is a list of conversations. So we don't even have to worry about unique IDs with this structure, but it all, it all gets you the same information just, just with different expressions. All right, that's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching.